Amanda is here and I really love Shawnee Smith. She's one of my favorite characters in the entire franchise. So it was really nice to see her here working with Kramer. You get more of like a backstory to their dynamic, which I really appreciated as well. Hey everyone, welcome back to Canon Cinema. I'm Amanda, otherwise known as AMX NDA Reviews on Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd. Today I will be reviewing Saw X. Yes, it is the 10th installment in the Saw franchise, and I know I've been away for a while. I have been on vacation, I have gone to TIFF, which I will have a couple of those reviews out for you guys shortly. It has been a very, very, very busy September, but I am back for Spooktober, and I am very excited to uh, dive into this review with you guys. So director Kevin Gertrude has been with the franchise for a while, whether he's been editing the films or he, you know, he directed it uh, this time around. He has been a part of the franchise, so it's always great to have a director who has grown with the story, the characters, obviously, of John Kramer and Amanda, so he knows them through and through. He's edited a couple, and you can tell that the editing is very familiar. Even going back to like Saw 1 and Saw 2 in the early days, you can tell that they are going back to basics with Saw X. Now, I am not a massive Saw fan, but the more you watch the Saw films, you kind of tap into John Kramer's mind, which is not a good thing, and you start laughing at what the traps do. You start laughing at all of that stuff because it's like, how obscure can you go? How twisted can we get here, John Kramer? And we find out. So Saw X takes place between Saw 1 and Saw 2. I know it's the 10th film. Why are we sticking it in there? But it is a really different film here, especially for John Kramer. We obviously find out that he is uh, he has been diagnosed with brain cancer and he has uh, been going to uh, treatments. He's been going to see doctors. He's been going to meetings with other cancer patients. And he stumbles upon one cancer patient, a friend of his. He went rogue and he found a doctor that was practicing different medicine. And obviously in exchange for payment, he'd be able to do one of the trials early on. So he went and did it. He's like, hoping that he can be healed, that he doesn't have cancer anymore. So everything kind of fast tracks. You tap into Kramer as like this really frail old man. And it's weird at first. It's a very character driven film. The story's pretty decent. And I think that that's when Saw works best is when there's a good balance between, you know, the characters that he's playing the games with. I think that in this case, it's at his strongest just because of where the story goes. So Kramer goes to this like isolated place in Mexico and like an industrial area. Um, and he's in Mexico off base, doesn't know where the location is because they kind of kidnap him when he goes into the taxi. Uh, and, and it's really weird. So by then you're like, this is sketchy. Like, what are we doing here? They go to this building and Cecilia Penderson, who's played by Sonobi Makoti Lund, is this doctor who wants to help people. She's like, my father helped people and she helped design this and this medicine will definitely cure people of cancer. So she takes him in there, introduces him to the rest of the staff and they're like quick to do this procedure. Really quick. Apparently you have to stay awake during the procedure, like half awake during the procedure, which is questionable. And at one point, he's seeing them operate on his brain. Again, really sketchy, questionable. So John Kramer wakes up and he feels like brand spanking new. He feels different. It's more of a mind game. Psychologically, you think that you're better, right? So she's like, yeah, you're on your way. You can leave. Cecilia's like, you don't have to stay here anymore. You just have to take a couple of these vials of extra medicine and you'll you'll be cured within like two weeks. Like this was just the process to get everything together. You'll be cured in two weeks. So he leaves. He's wrapped in bandages. And he's like, I want to get the worker something because it was a part, the industrial area was like a part of this house. And then you went into the, like this back room area and this is where they had all the supplies and the tables and the, you know, the operation table. It's all there. So he's like, I want to get them a bottle. And then he kind of creeps into the room and he finds out that it's all a sham and that Cecilia has been stealing money from people in exchange for them thinking that they're going to live. 
this sets Kramer totally off. And we kind of find out more of his moral code, which we've known for a very long time. He There's a reason for these games. There's a reason for these traps and then how the traps tie into what these people have done in their lives and if they're willing to fight for their life. And I think that in this particular film, it's constructed extremely well, better than the other Saw films. And mind you, there's nine other ones that, you know, some were good, some were bad, but this one really just ties everything in, in a perfect little bow. And it does take shots at people taking advantage of others, taking advantage of innocent lives, of hope. You know, they're hoping they have such hopefulness for the rest of their lives as cancer patients and they want to live. They fight to live. That's why he went out of his way to exchange this money um, to get the medicine and the treatment that he needed. The first part's a bit slow. The pacing's a bit off in the beginning because you're like, okay, how long is this going to, you know, take to get going? But once it hits the middle, it's still a bit awkward when uh, when Kramer's kidnapping the people that worked on his head. So he also finds out that when he takes the bandage off, there's absolutely no gash. There's no stitches. There's nothing. So on top of all that, he just becomes really infuriated. He's like, I have to get these guys. So he goes back to basics as the architect. You see him sketching in his little notebook, um, the brain trap as well. You see that. You see him designing certain things. And you see that there's something brewing. He has a plan within a plan within a plan. That's how Kramer operates. He gets everyone that was working with Cecilia and he puts them in a room. There's different traps. They're locked up. All of that. So each trap is associated with the role that these people had played. And I think that it was just so genius, these traps. And I kind of like that Kramer really spoke to these people and said, do you know what you're doing? Like, I'm not killing you guys. I'm not killing, which he doesn't. Technically, he doesn't. His hands are clean in this case, but they have death on their hands. They give the people hope and then they still pass away without getting like chemo, without getting the proper assistance because, hey, you know, I paid this person 250 grand to make me feel better, right? So Kramer really holds on to that because he's old. He's like, you know what? How could you screw over basically a guy like me? I'm old. What are you doing? So his moral codes really drilled into us in this film. And I like that we had amazing traps and the time constraint that they had was roughly three minutes for each of them. And they're all talking to each other. Cecilia's like telling the rest of her workers what they need to do in order to survive. So each one's picked off. The traps are really cool. The one that's in the trailer and that everyone keeps seeing with like the eyeballs being sucked out. That was pretty good. Loki underwhelming because it's in it's placed early on in the film and you don't get much of it. That was my only disappointment with that. But for the entire second half, you are in this room with the people that screwed over John Kramer. Amanda is here and I really love Shawnee Smith. She's one of my favorite characters in the entire franchise. So it was really nice to see her here working with Kramer. You get more of like a backstory to their dynamic, which I really appreciated as well. But there are a couple of twists near the end. I kind of called the big twist that happened towards the end. I'm not going to ruin it for you, obviously, but uh, that was kind of obvious. I really did like that they did the whole flashback, the montage with all the information, standard saw stuff, you have typical music cues that I really liked. The editing is so freaking sharp in this film, especially with the traps, because you're on a time crunch. So that's really important to get to. And then the score coming in as well. And that's because David Gratur has edited many Saw films and, you know, for him to do both and direct in this case, it was really impressive. Uh, but it comes down to the story. I think we see a different side of John Kramer. It's a sympathetic villain because Cecilia becomes the villain of this film and she's 10 times worse than Kramer in this story specifically. So it's weird saying that there's someone worse than Kramer. I think that's the only way it would have worked out, especially because Tobin Bell uh, is back and this is one of his better performances out of the entire franchise. I think for him, it was just a showcase of how much he has stayed with the character and how much people love his character. So I think we got to know him a bit more, a different side of him, which I really liked. And this goes straight into Saw 2. There is a post credit scene. I'm here to remind you that there is a post credit scene. And I did watch it and I will not ruin that one either. But I do like this ending. I think it's a very unique ending compared to the rest of the Saw films, considering what Kramer does. 
And I like that they kind of flipped the script on Kramer, especially because he was older. And this is like the placement between one and two. I just, I, I really had a different feel for this Saw film. It's top three for me. I'm not going to lie to you. I really liked Saw X. I was very impressed with it. I didn't really like Spiral. And I think that this is a massive step up from Spiral. I think when you get a good balance of story and kills, it just, it does so much better for the franchise. I think that the Saw franchise has struggled with that because sometimes there's a whole lot of violence with the traps. There's so much gore. There's so much blood. And then the story just falls apart. It doesn't make any sense. So if you have to keep me engaged based on traps and I don't remember what is happening in your film, that's where you kind of lose me with the Saw franchise. And that's been like at least I'd say four or five of them. I'm not going to lie. It's definitely top three because Saw 1 and Saw 2 are at the same level. I gave them the same kind of ratings. So I did rate uh, Saw X a three and a half out of five. I really enjoyed it. I really did. I think it's a showcase for Tobin Bell. It was awesome for him. You really felt for John Kramer, and I know it's really bad and you're going to feel for John Kramer, but you understand his actions because then if you look at the franchise as a whole, sometimes it, it gets too far and you lose the morality of what Kramer had been insisting from the beginning with his traps. He picked people on purpose and the traps were constructed based on what they had done. So that's what we have to keep in mind here. I love that it went back to basics. So yeah, Saw X, I give it a three and a half out of five. It is top three out of 10 for me. It's Saw 1, Saw 2, and Saw X for me. Definitely top three. Please let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed Saw X. Let me know what your favorite Saw film is. First one still can't be beat. It's the truth. It's the truth. So let me know in the comments below. If you guys enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. You can always follow me over at AMX NJ Reviews on Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd. And if you guys want to help me grow this wonderful channel, you can find no ways to do that in the bio below. I'll catch you guys next time. Keep watching movies.